Hello friends, I am Mithul Golakya, CEO of Infium Technologies and I am a 7 plus years of experienced Laravel developer. Welcome to the very first video of video series named Laravel Tips that I am going to start where I am going to show you uh, some various tips about Laravel which I am using in various projects. So today we are going to discuss a two base function of uh, Laravel allocant model which is not that much popular but it is very useful uh, in terms of uh, memory optimizations and uh, we are loading a very large amount of data from the database. So as a PHP developer we all know that we face memory issues a lot when we are loading a large data set from database into the memory right. Uh, for example, if we are going to print some PDF and we need to, you know, render a lot of data or we are doing some bulk operation where chunking is not possible or there can be a lot of cases like that. So, we all use Allocant a lot, right, in all of our Laravel projects and they are super easy and a very handful to use when we want to retrieve any data from the database. So, you write some model you create some model and just write like model name colon colon all and it's done. So it will give you all the records from the database. And um, when we write a code like uh, model name colon colon all, right, it's not actually returning us a records from the database, but it is written, returning the objects of the model like our Laravel model. So for Laravel, when you load say like 10,000 records from the database, it will take a bit time to prepare all these models from the records that it have or it has retrieved from the database. So uh, you know it is not just a pure STD class but it is a model class, the Laravel model class. Let's see it in action. So I have the screen over here and let's go to the welcome controller. So in my web.php what I did is like it is just like home controller and index. Uh, if I go here I have very basic setup view which comes with the Laravel by default. So what we will do over here is uh, we will say like users is equal to user all right and what I have is in my database in users table I have approx 50,000 records. So we will not retrieve all the records right now but we will just say like retrieve or we will say uh, limit 10 and then we will say like get and what we will do for just like a quick testing we will do dd and if we go here now and we refresh this page so if we see it is actually the model of user object like our user model object it is not the pure data that is retrieved from the database right so yeah and uh, let's try to print this record now remove this dd i will go to the welcome page and uh, over here i will create one more div uh, we'll pass these users into the welcome view let's say users say users and then over here I will say like for each users as user I will end for each and let's just space as it is say like user name right let's see what it is printing now yeah, so it is almost printing this all the names from the database. If you see over here, uh, it is retrieving 10 models. So yeah, now let's increase this 10 users to say 10,000. Okay, so let's get here 10,000. I will put uh, some brick statements here and it will not be that much pretty but let's try to print it and if you see uh, it is not a pretty good layout but that is not our intention so if you see it is taking 37 
MB of rain and previously with 10 records it was just taking 20 MB right. So, we are now preparing 10,000 models. So, of course, and the time it is taking is almost like to 1.5 seconds to return the view. So, the memory is increased I will say to like 2x when we go for you know like preparing all the models. So, uh, if you can consider like if you are loading so much data and even if you see like if user have any relationship and if you are loading all those data what will be the impact on the memory right. So, here is where the two base functions come to help us right. So, what I will do over here before this limit I will just add two base function and now let us try to print it again. So, if you see oops sorry yeah if you see the memory is reduced to 29 MB right. So, it is 8 MB of decrease and the, there is a significant improvement in the request time as well. So, previously it was one and half second now it is less than half second and we are still getting all the results. So, let us see what it is actually doing. So, for that what I will do I will just decrease it again to 10 and let us try to print the users. And now, if you print over here, it is returning the 10 results. But if you see, it is not now the user object, it is just a pure row data, right? So, it is just giving us all the records, just in pure, just like we are doing a database query. So, yeah, this is how we can use two base function to save the memory. And instead of preparing all the user model, we can just retry the whole data. Now, I, I know that like the question you might have will be like, so why we should use allocant at all, right? Or when to use allocant and when use two base function. So, the answer to that question is like, you know, allocant is really great when you are using its features like retrieving relationships at runtime or, you know, updating a record, deleting a record or you are using, using muted attribute or something like that. So, whatever features Eloquent is providing, if you are going to use that, then you should use Eloquent or if you are loading a small amount of data into memory, right. But if you are not going to use these all functions and if you just want pure raw data or if you are loading too much data into memory, uh, the two base function will be really useful. So, yeah, that is it for today's video. Uh, I will come up with some more tips uh, with the next video. Till the time you can follow this channel or also you can follow me on uh, my Twitter account where I will be sharing the updates about this video and uh, yeah uh, you can follow me on GitHub as well. This is the URL where you can find our other open source contributions. So yeah stay tuned and thank you for watching this video.